Okay. It's not live, right? Uh, no, that'll be on the iPad. It is live. That, the iPad will be... So this is a wet palette. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't have this. I gotta get some. Yeah, later. Yeah, you can put that there. Okay. Can start it. Yeah. We started already. All right. Fine. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna start the workshop now. Um, so I've actually prepared. Um, can you see? Yep. yep. Yeah. I've actually prepared this uh, diorama, a little big net, a vignette, um, and it makes use of this this set. <laughs> this set here, the yep, got it. Uh, FX multipose kit in 30 second scale. I find that 30 second scale is, is actually the best uh, figure painting um, because it's really small and at the same time there's no excuses for loss of detail. So that's that is like I think it's always been the classic uh, uh, figure scale. Now the what I have here is called a wet palette. So if you're painting an acrylic and you want those subtle blends and all that, you kind of need something like this. Otherwise, they have these products called retarders and, uh, that slow down. But I find when you use a retarder and you use acrylic and you try to mix it like as if it's oil, you'll end up with a chalky mess because sometimes the thing starts to separate and then part of the pigment on one side doesn't kind of mix with the other side. And then before you know it, you can't predict what you're going to get. So the way to do uh, acrylic is never to mix on the figure but to layer. So one layer on another and that's how you blend. Now, I've already started on this. So I've, I've actually, the guy who's jumping here uh, has already been pretty much done. I've left uh, one or two steps off in case I can't finish this guy on time. So I'll be able to show you those last few steps on this fella, okay? So let's not waste time. So the first time, first thing you gotta do, uh, the first few steps on these things, on figure, uh, I'm just gonna concentrate on the face. Huh? The rest still needs touch up and all. The first few steps on, on, on uh, the face uh, is actually very obvious. You have to prime. So I usually use white primer. Um, I use white primer and uh, for this figure, sometimes I use black, sometimes I use grey, that's another discussion for another time. But I use white especially when you have uniforms that are very light coloured, like the, the US Marine uh, uh, frog skin camouflage, it's a very light coloured thing, so you don't want to overwhelm it and then you end up having too much pigment on it trying to show the contrast, so that's why I, I stick to white for this kind of figure. But honestly on faces it makes no difference what colour you use. Now, for getting the the uh, the pigment going right I would recommend this thing it's it, so each of these acrylic companies they make their own but the brand that I always use is Liquitex it's Liquitex is a classic uh, acrylic um, paint that's like an artist acrylic paint so actually all the products that I use I don't use the the uh, uh, the one the proprietary one that comes from the company I actually use almost exclusively Liquitex so matte medium, uh, flow aid, uh, spraying medium, all the stuff I use is from Liquitex. Okay, let's get started. So the first step, the first few steps actually don't require much uh, detail and I don't usually waste time with magnifiers and all that. Now, what we see here is the figure is here, right? So what you want to do in the first step, you want to do it now. So some people will actually choose to do this step at the end, which you may have heard of as uh, black outlining. 
I actually do the black outlining. Oh, and one more rule. You keep black to the end. You never use black in the beginning of any of any acrylic. Because once you go black, you can't go back. It is like the end point pigment. It will, it will go through anything you paint. And if you put anything over black, it becomes grey and it's quite choppy and ugly and all that. So black for me is always the last step. So now the first step I do use is you get a pigment like this, which is uh, uh, I'm not sure you can see. Okay, I'm gonna bring that in. Okay, so the first step that you use is actually um, so this is raw umber, and you want to create uh, a glaze or a wash, sort of like around this uh, consistency um, the, really the difference between a glaze and a wash is not much difference a glaze is something you use to layer on a wash is you allow it to accumulate but really it's the same thing okay so what you do is you pick out the areas which are very um, which tend to be very dark and so the parts that are usually very dark are the nostrils don't worry if it, it uh, I need a Hand towel. Um, okay. <clears throat> just as well, I, I, I overdid it there. So when you overdo it, you just have to use your brush with no pigment and then you just mop it off like that. Okay, so you want to do your like that, then you want to go onto the bridge of the nose, and then you want to do the eyes. Okay, that's all you want to do at this stage, and maybe the this part between the lip. Now the reason you want to do all this now, it, it gives you a reference point that you will be able to use later on for your figure. Mind you, I'm using a very old, uh, a very old figure. These figures all come from the 70s. Uh, 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 they all come from the 70s. They're really old. And I think a lot of figure demonstrations they will actually use like the latest, greatest thing. And those, to me, they're just a little bit more than a wash, like a wash and a, you know, like a wash job. And so you, you don't actually learn very much. Um, so anyway, the point here is to just get the heart shadow, so stuff like between the ears and inside the ears, you don't want to do too much. Eh? And then the junction, so junctions are a very important part, so the junction between the, uh, uh, the junction between clothes and skin is always this colour, okay? I think there's a binocular strap there, so we'll get that also. So basically anything between uh, two dissimilar two dissimilar things, you just use a, a super dark color like a, like a raw umber. So this is raw umber that I'm using. Uh, it's separated out, so normally it's darker. Okay. Now don't have to worry about getting it exactly done. Now this particular figure uh, also has hair so at the junction of the hairline you also want to sort of include uh, some uh, an outline okay don't worry about it being too accurate or not okay so same thing there you want to do uh, the sleeves uh. so sleeves also get the outline okay so I didn't cover this earlier but one of the things that people always get over bothered by is uh, the skin colour and then I guess many people read about Shepard, Shepard Payne's uh, book and he says stay away from commercial I remember that line stay away from commercial uh, flesh because it's too pink 
No, I don't think that's entirely I mean, no, clean. So I don't think that's entirely correct. So what I do is actually I use a combination of three commercially available because acrylic kind of kind of needs that. Um, they get blended so much so that it's very hard to predict. So I use something like this, like a flesh and a beigey brown. Uh, sorry, uh, a beigey brown and then a, a reddish brown. So I use these combinations and I make a, like a base color here. So this is the base color here. Okay, then from the base color, I add red brown to do the shadows and I add the, the base flesh to do the highlight. I do not add white and I don't add uh, like browns because you add whites and browns to acrylic, you get again a grey kind of chalky mess. So I don't do that. Okay, so, so that's the first step. Uh, you can see it's a very simple step and already you can start to see the idea behind the step is to give the deep shadows like underneath the nostrils and lips and all that because if you try to put shadow color into the lips and the eyes you never quite get it right it kind of looks kind of looks vague in its definition it doesn't quite look like a shadow color okay so now i'm gonna switch around i'm gonna get a slightly bigger brush now because this next step is very much like a wash so i'll go for the deepest color uh, the deep, the, the deeper shadow. Huh? Mind you, this is not the the the. This is the deeper shadow. Okay, so the deeper shadow is actually going to be put on like a wash, and you're gonna see it's gonna be quite messy. Um, and then you'll be wondering, you know, why so 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 much lack of detail, but you'll understand later on uh, why. So you want to actually get all the shadow recesses. Can you see it, um, Lee? Uh, I'm, I'm, I can see because I'm, I'm watching on the monitor. I mean, can it? Is it being? Oh, it can. Mm. It's quite wide angle. Yeah, unfortunately, kind of really interested in the end, but. Mm. So basically, in this stage, all you're doing is defining up the deeper shadows. Okay, so you're getting a bit behind the throat there. A lot behind the neck. It's really more like a. It's more. It's more like a wash kind of shadow. So a lot of people will say, "Well, you know, that's all I want to do for my figure," and then you don't. You don't do more than that. Um, and it's fine. That's cool if, if that's what you want to do. Um, yeah, but the 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 thing is, I've seen a lot of figure competitions in my time, and I've, I've been in the game for a long time. And actually, from one step to the next is very little. You'll be amazed. It's just a few uh, what? It's just a few steps, and then you've already gone from entry level into like competition level just by doing a few steps. Okay, so already it looks like this. And you can see it's already looking pretty decent. And this is just a wash. I haven't actually done the serious stuff yet. So you want a bit of a shadow there. And around the wrist. You want to bring a bit of shadow into the fingers there. Then you know in the there's this in the elbow there's this little thing here. And then this is in shadow, so you probably wanna just put some shadow in there. So yeah. So a lot of people like to do this pre-shading with the spray can and all that. Really if you painted enough figures you'll realize that's just an unnecessary step. They're just uh, kind of adding on stuff. Oh, hey! Welcome back, man. Okay. So, 
it's all gonna be that kind of thing. And so deep shadows are deep shadows. So you just want to do some deep shadowing between the fingers there, there. Now it looks very messy and that's fine. Then maybe you want to play with some of the muscles like that, just just to give it an effect. It may not be anatomically correct. Okay, bit there, bit there. Okay, so that's basically what you are at this stage. Okay. Now, uh, just an aside, uh, the acrylic actually is not, is you don't go, how do I put this, you don't, okay, let's, uh, can you see this, let me bring that into field, okay, so these are going to be the next uh, three shadows, these are going to be the next two shadows, this is a highlight, okay, now the thing, you have to remember about acrylic is you don't go like deep shadow and then light shadow over it and then another light shadow over it if you do that you'll end up um, obscuring so what you want to do is actually to um, you want to go to the edge of the next color okay so for example this you don't need much uh, so this is uh, my next shadow. This is my next shadow color that I'm going to use. And after this, I'm going to use this shadow. Okay. Now you'll see what I do and try to pay attention. I will not be putting like one over the other. I'm actually going to go right up against the edge. Okay. So I'll show you that. And as, by the way, as you get higher and higher up the highlights, you're going to get thicker and thicker. Okay, so... So now we're going to get into the next shadow. So the next shadow, you'll notice, like this is already very deep. I can't quite go in there, so I'm actually just going to go like that. Like that. Like that. Now what this does is, it actually blends it actually starts to blend so acrylic blending is not like normal blending you don't you don't kind of uh, like get two colors and blend it together what you what you do really is uh, you work on the transitions okay and you'll see it actually look very very subtle at the end So here you actually want to go like that and you just want to focus on the edge. So you'll see as you go higher and higher or yeah, lighter and lighter, you will be using less and less pigment. Okay? So this is where you are at this stage. Got it? Now You're going to go into the next shadow. Huh? You're still at where you are at the stage. Can you hold it under the light? Under the light. Okay, so now we are going to get into the next shadow.
So by the time you come into the mid shadows, you are only like stippling a bit. And you're stippling a bit at the junction. So you actually end up with a face that looks like that. Okay. Now, sometimes if you have a figure like this, it's kind of useful at this stage. Don't wait till the later stage to kind of put in some wrinkles and then clean the, clean the wrinkles up. So just something like that will do for a wrinkle. Don't do more than that. So maybe even the corner of the eye, you might want to put in a wrinkle there. And maybe something like that. Okay. Now, I'm into this shadow here. So now we're going to clean up this part. And we're gonna do that. And that. And then same thing for the fingers. Thing on this side and this side, this side, and this side. So as I said uh, just now, we will do less and less pigment. Okay, so now we finish the shadows. Oops, the shadows. Huh? Now the thing about doing the shadows in this method of doing it you don't go back to the shadows so uh, this is the part that's very strange for this technique but if you look at this uh, other figure here you'll see I, it's only one direction okay you don't go you don't go back and forth and back and forth which i've seen some people some demonstrations where they go back and forth and back and then it gets very confusing um, because you don't know when you're done okay so this is where we are this is the shadow stage done Okay, now from this stage onwards, I'm going to need my magnifier. And the reason we need magnifiers, for me at least, is I can't see anymore. Okay, so you want to study the figures because the shadows will tell you where the highlights are. Okay. So now, looking at this figure, right, you want to go to the first highlight. Huh? So following from that earlier example, huh, the highlights actually get um, thicker and thicker as you go upwards. Huh? Okay, one more thing. Sometimes when you are at this stage, I don't need to do it here, but sometimes at this stage when you see the uh, when you see the contrast between the normal skin and the the contrast between the normal skin and the shadows is very stark. You can actually knock it down with a uh, you can knock it down with a flash wash so you take the flash and then you 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 make a dilute solution of the flash like that dilute solution and then you just go over in my case when i look at this figure i don't need to do it because to me the contrasts are enough okay so now i'm gonna go to i'm gonna go to the uh, this is the double O. This is number one in one Okay, this is the double O. Okay. Get a shot of the hunger. <laughs> okay. You need a triple? I will when I do the eyes. Okay. So where was I? I was here. Okay. Right. Eight hey, no, was here. Okay. Okay. So now for the first highlight. Huh? So so far we've been working in shadow. Now we're gonna do the first highlight. Now first highlight basically is quite general. I don't have to be so restrictive. But the idea is, if you have any like, like. Uh, 
wrinkles or something like that you want to block them out first so actually unlike a lot of other painting style this style is working on the highlights uh, for detail not the shadows you know and that seems to be counterintuitive but actually it's a much more effective way to get the effects you want okay so this is the part that people really like uh. Okay, so you're just going to define all the, now obviously you want something on the nose, okay, now the lip is one of those places that you should, you should really spend some time, now with the lip right, if you study the lip, there's this one line here, then there's a line like that I'm using a pretty big brush but yet you can see the effect is doable huh? and these are really old figures so they're not so well defined but you can actually create your own definition there you go and then you go like that like that like that okay same thing you want to do on that side. you notice actually I'm staying away from the eye area. Because one of the mistakes that you do is you try to build up layer on the eyes. Uh, and then sooner or later, you, you a big blob of paint falls into the eye and then you lose the definition. That you want to go back and forth because you want to make sure that it's symmetrical. No? Okay, so this is where you are in. The nice uh, thing about this particular series of multi is they do a very good job on the throat. So you want to show the throat. And then they always have this neck muscle here. So if they, it's on the figure, it's really nice to put it there. Okay, so that gives you a very nice kind of set of uh, highlights. So now we are going to go on to the fingers. You gotta come forward a bit. No, 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 that one. Yeah, there you go. So you want to go on to the fingers. Now when you do your fingers, you realize in your, if you look at your own hand that the tendons go this way, this way, this way and this way. And then this is where you can start to play with the muscles in the forearm. You can do one like that. You can see actually, you know, the, they did a very nice job doing the forearm muscles, you see? Even some of the very modern figures don't have this. And if you look at your elbow, this is actually quite accurate. And I, a lot of new figures don't even have this. Okay. So this is actually a very easy to paint kind of figure. Okay. There. Now same thing, you notice in your forearm, there's actually this one big muscle block. So one thing you do, you know, just now you may have been like, you know, why is it so blotchy? But now I'm actually using the, I'm actually using the uh, highlight color to identify, to, to define the, the, you know, the anatomy and the structures and all that. So yesterday I accidentally poured the resin into the fingertips so on this finger I won't be able to do the fingernail but uh, that's okay it's under water okay so that's kind of a nice 
stage to be in now. Okay, so now the next stage uh, is I've created highlights, right? I've created all the highlights and which means uh, following from what I said earlier, the highlights do not uh, overwhelm the last one. So if let's say you have highlights like this, the next highlight gets smaller and smaller and smaller on the highlight area. You can't sort of say, uh, okay, I, I don't have a highlight here, so I'm going to create a new highlight in the next shade. If you do that, there'll be a very stark jump in the contrast. It'll be quite unattractive. So you want to, except for the eyes, the eyes are the ones and you'll understand why later. Okay, so I'm going to go to the next highlight and you'll see what I do with the highlights. Huh? When you are not using any special, this is your standard uh, uh, humbrol uh, synthetic. So it's really, a lot of guys get very worked up by the brushes and all. It's nothing to do with that kind of thing. Although, I mean, I do have good brushes, but I'm just trying to show you can do the same with, with these brushes. What do I want to do? Okay, next color. Okay, one of the, one of the things about br uh, brush loading is if you look at it, I never load the whole brush. So there's no water up here. It's only in the tip, okay? Okay, so this is where things start to get a bit dicey. Huh? Now, when you get into it's good to start with the nose because it gives you a good idea of how to apply so you know your eyes at this point when they frown there's always this ruffle right so you get you can put these two dots for the wrinkle and then you can put another dot here for the nose for the nose wrinkle you can do one in the tip and you can actually put a ring around the nose tip because that's kind of effective and then like that and like that okay that was a bit too much then you want to do the bit between the lip like that and a few dots here and a dot here. Now, and you want to do that to create kind of a like a dimple kind of thing now as you get into this area you don't want to cover the whole thing and highlight you just want to do a bit like that and maybe emphasize the, the top part of this curve then do a bit of that and then again maybe emphasize. don't go all the way down because if you're going to go all the way down why, why did you put the original color like for me, right, this area you don't usually need to highlight more than me, that. Just maybe a few dots here and there. Because if you if you keep going over the same area again two, three times, then there's no point, man. you know. You might as well just put one there. Okay. Now comes the eyes. Huh? Can you uh, pause there a sec? Yeah. Just want to pause one second. I'm going to change batteries. Yeah. And... Uh, 